Hey folks, this is Chi Baker from Portland, Oregon and Street Tactical Integrations. And uh, today I wanna kind of show, discuss uh, some of my thoughts on looking at this false lead principle and how uh, I have been using it. I'm just kind of translating it into a TRICOM, uh, the TRICOM curriculum and state of mind. And for I think many people, it's helpful to translate them into a base of what they've already know, learn, experience, train in, and then kind of move it over. And a lot of times you'll find you're doing the exact same thing or you're doing an adaptation and that kind of helps you kind of gain that skill instead of trying to like learn two completely separate things. If you can kind of put it within your framework and, and contextual work that you can absorb it quicker. Um, so, uh, one thing to start off with, um, again, looking at a boxing language is one of the maneuvers is called a power jab. And a power jab is uh, going from whatever your lead foot is of switching that lead foot and coming in and getting that jab. So you've got your opposite foot uh, to your jab hand coming in. And so for JKD, we do a right lead. Uh, and so I'm here, I'm gonna step forward my left foot and get that power jab. So it's here and bam. Okay, that's your power jab. Just a quick note, um, I talked about the split. Uh, if he throws um, a right punch, I'm going to split down the middle, okay, or split his arm down the middle and manage this hand as I punch. So it's like that, like that, okay? And maybe I'll grab one of my training partners and I'll show a different video on that, but that's the split. So in any case, <clears throat> um, power jab. So uh, that might help translate of how you get in that false lead of I'm here, right, in my right lead and I'm stepping with my left foot and getting that power jab in. Bam, like that, okay? Now looking at uh, kind of maneuvering in a more defensive mode to start is, again, I'm, I'm managing his, his right hand and I'm going to Paxau or Pat, and uh, Paxau's JKD, Pat, uh, is a boxing term. So I pat that hand here to manage it as I step. And again, right now I've got my left hand forward and my left foot forward. So I stop here to pat and I'm evading, right? And then I keep this lead here and I come in and do what Jared talked as a thrust hack. So I'm gonna come forward here and uh, come in, boom, and get that hack this way. So again, I'm coming here to check and coming in and getting that, that thrust hack, okay? One, two, okay? So again, I'm, I'm managing this, uh, what was the verb which he used? Um, clear, right? So I'm clearing here as I step, right? I step the same direction and I contact here. And then from here, what we're doing is we're controlling. So I'm getting this underneath here, getting an overhook and controlling. Um, and depending on uh, here, we're switching our position for a stronger stance, more resilient stance. So we're switching leads again. So I go from left lead, pat, left lead hack, right, to right lead control, okay? So again, I'm staying, I'm moving in one direction here and getting that sequence and then changing leads for stability, okay? So that's um, going off of the same direction. Potentially because uh, he has shifted towards me, um, which happens a lot of times. So if I go this way to move, the person may follow me and turn in direction, and it's gonna be hard for me to get around, so going the same direction may not work well. So instead of going this way and this way, I go this way and then come in this way and switch directions, okay? So that's the second scenario, again, off of the, the triangle, female triangle work, footwork, is I'm going left here and then I step across here, and now my hack becomes more of a slash hack because of the location and the arm. Again, I'm checking this hand, checking this arm. If it's outside, I'm gonna continue to push it outside, which helps with that, that overhook. 
if it's more enclosed here, I'm going to get get a trap here, um, and what that may do is is allow me to from from here to get more of that elbow uh, control. So depending on where things go, I may get an overhook and control this way, right? Or I may, again, if it's more inside here, it's gonna be easier to clear here and come in here. So depending on when the arm is, uh, I would see the arms out there, I don't wanna to try to swing it in, that makes zero sense. So I'm here and I come across and try to trap, if it's on the outside, I'm gonna keep it outside here and get that, that underhook versus I'm here, let's say this arm is in here, that helps with here and then getting that clearing motion here, right? And then getting that pack in and then getting that elbow control. You know my filmography isn't great sometimes. So again, I'm changing directions from left, moving right, coming here, controlling, getting an underhook, or moving left, right? Moving right, getting that clear here, and then getting that elbow control. Uh, again, I can do that on opposite sides if I want to go with, if I'm in my right lead, right, I may go right here, right, and then stay right and get that hack. Again, I can get that elbow control here, or I, I go left here, right, um, <clears throat> and maybe he slips around or whatever, and that arm gets, gets, gets away from me, and then I might be coming in here and getting an underhook. Okay. Uh, something is that, um, again, depending on what my follow-up tactic is, uh, if I want to take this person to the ground, that I'm going to stay in, in a right lead and step and bring them down this way, right? If I'm kind of more in that grappling mode here and get here, I'm going to want to switch that lead and get that stability. And of course, you can go from this, right? And then quickly here, right? And then depending on how you want to do this, um, you can again pull them down to the ground, right? Some of you may decide to slip under. So I'm here, I'm slipping under here, and I'm getting to here, right? And then I get my takedown or my control. So there's a lot of options within that. It all depends on the situation. Again, we never want to, uh, push an agenda, we want to have it in real time, um, and that's gonna you know, go, go where they're going, um, let their flow determine your flow, and that way you're not doing force on force, which a lot of times isn't, isn't the best idea. So, <clears throat> again, uh, in review, sometimes you're gonna to stay to the same side here, right? So I'm staying the same side, and now I'm in that false lead, right? Sometimes I'm gonna go here and then step across and I'm in uh, a false lead as I come across. And as you, as you start to ramp this up and make it live with a partner, that partner's gonna be adjusting, right, back and forth. And uh, so sometimes it's gonna be reasonable to stay to one side, and sometimes you're gonna wanna counter and move to the other side. And uh, it's, I think it's good to practice both. Um, first, you set up the scenario so you're getting to practice both. And then you just go live and let, let it, let's see what happens. Um, so hopefully this is helpful. I'll give a shout out to uh, Paulo, I believe that's how I pronounce his name correctly, who also posted um, some of his own work. Uh, I'm always excited to see what other people are doing and learn from their knowledge and their experience and kind of share all this stuff. And uh, again, that's gonna help all of us prosper and, and gain. So again, thanks to the Tricom community. Thank you for Jared uh, and uh, let's keep it up folks. Thanks, be well.